God's word promises remuneration to those who persecute his redeemed. In Psalm 54 and verse 5, David reiterates God's promise and suggests a severe consequence to such aggression. Reading from verse 5, he writes, He will recompense the evil to my foes, destroy them in, their, in, in your faithfulness. David calls upon the Almighty that their malice against him will not go unavenged. I don't believe that David is calling for recompense in the sense of seeking revenge, but rather he states it as a principle of God stated through the law issued by Moses. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He is seeking justice. If you have been born again, you can be glad that God shows us his mercy rather than his justice. The New American Standard Bible translates the word psalmeth as destroy. In, most, in its most basic form, the word means to be silent or keep silent. Here it is contextually used to imply a much greater force as if it were a deep and penetrating blow that would silence forever the enemy. Such a blow would be dealt to the world during the Great Tribulation. Zechariah the prophet writes in Zechariah 14, 1 through 6, A day of the Lord is coming when your plunder will be divided in your presence. I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem for battle. The city will be captured, the houses looted, the women raped, half of the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be removed from the city. Then the Lord will go out to fight against those nations as he fights on the day of battle. On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem to the east. The Mount of Olives will split in half from east to west forming a huge valley so that half of the mountain will move to the north and half to the south. You will flee by my mountain valley, for the valley of the mountains will extend to Azel. You will flee as you fled from the earthquakes in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come and all the holy ones with him. On that day there will be no light. The sunlight and moonlight will diminish. It will be a day known only to Yahweh without day or night. But there will be a light in the evening. On that day, living water will flow out of Jerusalem, half of it toward the eastern sea and the other half toward the western sea. In the summer and winter alike, on that day, Yahweh will become king over all the earth, Yahweh alone and his name alone. All the land of Geba to Rimmon, south of Jerusalem, will be changed into a plain. But Jerusalem will be raised up and will remain on its site from the Benjamin Gate to the place of the first gate, to the corner gate and from the Tower of Hanel to the royal winepress. People will live there and never again will there be a curse to com or of complete destruction. So Jerusalem will dwell in security. This will be the plague the Lord strikes all the people with. Those who have warned against Jerusalem, their flesh will rot while they stand on their feet, and their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongues will rot in their mouth. On that day, great panic from the Lord will be among them, so that each will seize the hand of another, and the hand of one will rise against the other. Judah will also fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations will be collected, gold, silver, and clothing in great abundance. The same plague as the previous one will it strike the horses, mules, camels, donkeys, and all of the animals that are in those camps. Then all of the survivors from the nations that came against Jerusalem will go up year after year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the festival of booths. There will come another time at the end of the millennial reign of Christ when Satan will be released to again raise an army to fight against our Lord. We read in Revelation 20, verses 1 through 10, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven with a key to the bottomless pit and a heavy chain in his hand. And he seized the dragon, that old serpent, the devil, and bound him in chains for a thousand years. The angel threw him into the bottomless pit, which was then shut and locked so Satan could not deceive the nations any more until the thousand years were finished. Afterwards, he must be released for a little while. Then I saw thrones and people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus and for proclaiming the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his statue, nor accepted the mark on their foreheads or their hands. They all came alive again and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. 
The rest of the dead did not come back to life until the thousand years had ended. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. For then the second death holds no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. When the thousand years have come to an end, Satan will be let out of prison. He will go out to deceive the nations called Gog and Magog in every corner of the earth. He will gather them together for battle. A mighty army as numerous as the sand along the seashore. And I saw them as they went up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people in the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven on the attacking armies and, dis and consumed them. Satan will be brought to a fitting end. I don't believe it will be with great fanfare of a marching army. The sound of trumpets or even the sound of munitions. Simply, our Lord will say, silence. And the battle for the people of God will be brought to a close forever when God will destroy his enemy. And the prophecies conclude in verse 10. And then the devil, which had been deceived them, was thrown into a fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever.